Hey everyone, in the news this week, Paul McCartney played at Glastonbury and I wonder if the body double who conspiracists say replaced him in 1966 thought he'd have to keep the act going for this long. Gary Lineker, he gave an interview in which he claimed to have suffered racial abuse due to having slightly tanned skin. Or perhaps they were just annoyed about him constantly going around nicking people's crisps in the 90s. Of course, identifying as an ethnic minority thus opens the door to Gary Lineker suing the BBC if they ever try to cut his pay. Or maybe he's planning to start wearing women's clothes next and apply for a job as Doctor Who, or perhaps presenting Newsnight. And finally, there's also rumours that the Pope might resign, so if anybody's going down the bookies, he might want to go online first and research a list of Ukrainian cardinals. But of course the big story of the week was the Supreme Court decision in America, although it's been very badly reported on, so I thought I might clear up a couple of key points here. Number one, the Supreme Court didn't ban abortions. What it did do was allow states to pass laws doing so. So any bans or rules you see will be there because a politician passed a law on it, not because a court banned something. Number two, Joe Biden and the House and the Senate could pass a law or even a constitutional amendment guaranteeing abortion rights. America is one of the few countries not to have a formal federal law on the subject, and they did try something last month, but the law failed to pass, because contrary to what you see in the news, this is not a subject where the majority of politicians even want to pass a law. Number three, Joe Biden is one of those politicians. For decades he was a senator for Delaware, and he's a practicing Catholic who spent years trying to pass a law banning abortion nationwide, just in case the Roe Wade decision was never overturned. If Joe Biden ever enthusiastically backs a new law, it would be like watching Prince Charles campaigning on behalf of McDonald's or putting Katie Price in charge of the MCC. Actually, that wouldn't be a bad idea. At least she'd struggle when it came to inventing new bastardised versions of cricket. Anyway, number four. One of the world leaders to condemn the vote was Emmanuel Macron, saying that the US should be more like France. Which is funny, because until last week, France had stricter abortion rules than Mississippi. Indeed, with a 14-week limit, France has some of the strictest abortion laws in the Western world. Number five, in contrast, a lot of US states have no time limit and allow abortions well into the ninth month of pregnancy with no reason even needing to be given. We're not talking about cases involving disability or the mother's life being at risk here. We're talking about lifestyle abortions, days before a baby's due date with no reason being given. No other country in the world does that. And going further still, California and Maryland currently have proposed laws working their way through the state legislatures that would allow abortions up to seven days after birth. That's euthanasia, not abortion. And the reason that abortion is in the news is largely because the pro-choice side of this debate has become so ludicrously extreme and polarising that many normal people see banning it entirely as the preferred option if you have to pick a side. If that makes life like The Handmaid's Tale, then so be it. It's probably a lot better than living in Logan's Run or Soylent Green. Number six, there's a huge irony here that the subjects being discussed are women's rights and bodily autonomy. Justin Trudeau took to Twitter to emphasise to women that it's your body, your decision, and the government should have no say in the matter, having just spent the last two years trying to jail people who said that exact same thing when it came to COVID. Similarly, people have had their careers destroyed for saying that women's rights are even a thing, or that only women can become pregnant. Now men are supposed to say out of things though and not get involved in issues that don't affect them. According to the more vocal parts of the internet, anyone could give birth to a child, regardless of gender. Prince Andrew or Bill Clinton could get pregnant if they wanted, apparently, and if they convinced enough woke people to believe them. So maybe they should have just as much say in the subject of abortion as some of those teenage girls who were trafficked to the island. Or maybe this is madness. Number seven, talking about rich people with dubious ethics, somebody who stayed out and wasn't involved in making this decision was Donald Trump. Banning abortion was one of a litany of things the left screamed was guaranteed to happen under his watch, and of course it never did. Although it did when Joe Biden came into power. Same with the economy imploding, or trying to ban freedom of movement, or journalists being blacklisted for their beliefs, or Russia being emboldened into starting a war with no fear of US reprisals. You could argue that Trump appointed three court justices, but then you could also throw the blame at President Obama, who famously was tricked into not filling a court vacancy because it was an election year, an election that Hillary Clinton then went on to lose. And then you also have the case of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She was urged to retire years ago so she could be replaced with someone younger and presumably even more left-leaning. Instead, she stayed on before eventually passing away at the age of 87 and being replaced during the Trump administration. It's interesting how she went from being a progressive folk hero to being vilified on the left by her selfish desire to stay on working and ultimately tipping the court the other way. Although she herself had said for years that the best and only way to settle things once and for all would be for Washington to actually pass an abortion law on the subject. But that would involve politicians doing some work and being productive and reaching out across the aisle. It's never going to happen. You know, it's a real shame there's not some kind of way to settle the matter with an abortion law that also includes a 10-year military funding program or a kickback to the energy industry. Then we'd have the whole thing sorted out in time for the 4th of July, fireworks and all. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.